Miss Ohio 2017, Sarah Clapper, is going to come up and join us. And so is Rosie Westerbeck, who introduced us to Sarah. So a couple more female standouts will join us. Give them a hand. All right, so Rosie, we were talking about, you know, Legends Northwest Ohio. You were excited to share your story, and I said, who else do you think we should invite? And you said, oh, I know Miss Ohio. Is that okay? I was like, yeah. You want to ask her? And she's like, oh, here's her number. Just text her. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and five minutes later, she texted back. So tell us about your, your friendship and how that all began. Yes, so uh, through the Miss Ohio's organization, uh, I was in the teen program, and Sarah was competing in the Miss Ohio program, so she's always been a role model for me, and obviously for a lot of other people as well, but we kind of grew up in the program together, so when I was competing, it took me a few years to finally win the teen title, and then Sarah was competing as well. How many years did it take you? Five years. So we were in the program together for quite a while, and so I just got to see her transform through the program as well as her watching me grow as a young woman as well. So um, just become sisters through that, and obviously because of our faith, we were just kind of naturally drawn together, so it was pretty special. Very cool. Was Rosie the reason you came, Sarah, to the banquet? Well, absolutely. <laughs> if Rosie says it's okay, <laughs> then it Rosie must be. If Rosie invited me, then absolutely. I knew I'd, I had to come. So I would do anything for her. She's a very special individual, and her and her entire family truly have just inspired me and inspired me to continue to really strive to, to make a difference in the lives of others like they've impacted my life. So I was very, very accepting to be able to come here and share this stage with her. You were a gymnast, and then you weren't a gymnast. Mm -hmm. That's part of your story. Yeah, so I, I began competitive gymnastics at the age of five. So I knew how to do a back handspring before I knew how to read a chapter book. And I grew up in, in the gymnastics world. Uh, it is a full year-round sport. You don't ever get a break. So it was very quickly something that became my entire identity. I had a dream of going to Kent State University on an athletic scholarship, and that was my dream after I realized I wasn't going to be the next uh, Sean Johnson. But she's a... Olympic gymnast for those of you that don't know <laughs> and so I was just you know working towards this goal giving it everything that I got I felt that God had gifted me with these talents and these abilities and I was just going to glorify him through these skills but unfortunately my sophomore year of high school I sustained severe spinal injuries that very quickly ended my gymnastics career and ultimately stripped me of that identity that identity as an athlete that identity as a gymnast and all of a sudden you're beginning to wrestle with trying to figure out where your value comes from because i've found oftentimes especially as athletes we allow our sport to give us our value and i had the opportunity to sit down with jim trestle and he said you know even he struggled sometimes to convince students that they could be more than the athlete and so when i began competing in the miss america organization i decided that my personal platform was going to be titled athletics today a lifetime of tomorrows trying to help prepare athletes for life after athletics very cool very cool identity we announced you as Miss Ohio 2017, so the identity still fine. <laughs> continues to, to be a part of your life. How, how do you, you know, separate that? Well, you know, I spent an entire year as Miss Ohio traveling thousands of miles all across the state of Ohio, really transforming the notion of identity, not allowing what we do to define who we are. So those are two very common words that we use every single day, but really encouraging students. And by encouraging them, I was reaffirming in myself that even a title as Miss Ohio, being the gymnast, those are all just what we do. They're very finite things that we do with our lives. And ultimately, we have to base our value on something that is infinite. And that's our ability to make a difference through our stories, through sharing our experiences, and ultimately uplifting others, and also, and that includes glorifying God. So just as I, was, I was telling them that, I was constantly reminding myself, Sarah, this is very finite. This is going to end. Do not allow this to be, be to become your identity. And hopefully, I get to a point where people they know me as Sarah Clapper, not just Miss Ohio. All right, Rosie, you can certainly relate to that as far as identity pressure on the basketball court. Those are things you've had to work through. Yes, absolutely. So um, kind of going into my senior year, uh, I just felt like an athlete and I always felt like, you know, I was just a basketball player. But that's when I started volunteering more throughout high school was just getting involved and in giving back to uh, mostly the children's hospitals. But that was my way of just 
making a difference. Like Sarah said, you have just an awesome power because uh, the athletes are like the cool kids in town. You know, you have the opportunity. They're like, you know, all these young kids, they look up to you and you have the opportunity to change their lives and change the, like everyone in the community as well. So just being that athlete and volunteering and making sure you're being a role model to the young kids and saying, you know, I'm not just an athlete. I'm giving back and helping other kids. Um, that's just a way of just showing you're more than an athlete. So that's what I enjoyed doing. Of course, your Rosie's Red Wagon campaign has gone all over the place. You're putting on basketball events as well, you know, stuff with the Reds too. Just how did that start and what has it meant for you? Yes, yeah, so the first thing that comes to mind when you say that is you have to be broken. So your ministry always comes from being broken. So if you don't break, kind of like Sarah did, you know, you go through that time when you are kind of depressed and you don't know who you are and you're breaking, you don't know where you're going. That's when your ministry comes through. And that's what happened to me in first grade. I was, you know, nobody knew what was going on with me uh, health-wise. So my mom took me to the doctors and was trying to figure it out. And then they were finally like, all right, let's just go to the hospital. Let's get this figured out. And once I got there, I was immediately took into surgery. And so if they didn't catch it right away, I would not be here. So my ministry came from that. And going into high school, I wanted to give back to the ones who literally saved my life. And so I started Rosie's Red Wagon campaign, just wanting to collect toys and wagons for the children's hospitals and give them to them, just like I received a blanket when I was there. And then I didn't do it my sophomore year or junior year, but going into senior year, I was ready to do it again just because, you know, going into senior year, you want to do something cool and impactful. And so I was going to try and get somebody cool, like famous there. I was like, let's see who we can get. So I started emailing some people that I knew and eventually got with the Reds. Somehow, you know how networking works. It just kind of connects people. So um, I guess it just kind of happened through that. I just connected with the Reds uh, caravan, and then they start partnering with me throughout, you know, now and in years to come. Awesome. What would you pass along to the female athletes out there that you remember high school? Sarah, you do as well. What would you say to them to encourage them right now, especially our high school athletes? Yeah, for sure. Know who you are. Uh, you have to find your core values before you go into anything else. Sarah and I really advocate, especially in the Miss America organization, before you go into anything, you must know who you are. So if you're going into college, going into a sport, or just a new environment completely, you have to know what you stand for and who you stand for, most importantly. So you have to become the best Rosie you can be, the best Sarah you can be in any situation. So know your core values before you go into anything else and truly take time to know who you are and who you stand for. Same question, Sarah. Yeah, I, <clears throat> in addition to speaking on athletics, I'm going to empty some words in here. <laughs> I should have drank water. I gave a sermon this morning. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Three, actually. Okay, just kidding. Wow. Sorry, I've been speaking all morning, but definitely what, what you said about understanding your values, knowing what you stand for, knowing ultimately what you're called to do in this life, uh, trying to keep everything in perspective, especially as you're finishing up your, your college career, preparing for that transition, understand that these are pivotal moments in your life, and there's no one that is going to be able to be there for you through all of this other than your, your Savior, which is Jesus. Uh, definitely continue to push into your faith and really pull from the scripture verses that resonate with you because ultimately the realization is that, that other people are going to fail you in life. Not everyone can be that perfect person that you might need them to be. So understanding that there is only one person that is able to be there for you no matter what happens in life and just being able to rely on that faith to get you through. And I know that I went to a public university. I attended the Ohio State University and my best friend, she played college softball actually at Ashland University. So seeing our two very different experiences in college, there were a lot of people that tried to pull me one way, uh, tried to pull me away from my faith in college. So being able to stand firm to what you believe and never shy away from that, even when people test you and understand that you don't have to have all the answers. You know, God calls us just to be examples of his love and just be able to pour out your love into the lives of others and understand that that's enough. Awesome. Thank you, ladies. Rosie Westerbeck, Sarah Clapper.